Um, as a mass communications major, I often tell people that I'm majoring in storytelling. And granted, there's some humor behind this statement, but at its core, my major is about just that. It's finding genuine stories and telling them in such a creative way that people can't help but pay attention. Tonight, I'll be sharing my passion for storytelling with you, and hopefully we'll be convincing you that stories, including your own, are incredibly important. The best way to start, as they say in a vast majority of stories, is at the beginning. Now, we all know good stories, and we're familiar with stories like Little Red Riding Hood, or Cinderella, Romeo and Juliet. I'm sure most of us know Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Yeah. Chances are, even a good number of us are familiar with Greek myths, like Homer's Odyssey and uh, the myths of Hercules. But in order to actually define story, we need to look at the similarities between all of these. Joseph Campbell wrote a book called Hero with a Thousand Faces. And in this book, he analyzed Greek myths and attempted to construct a plot line that he saw run through all of them. He called it the adventure of the hero, or the hero's journey. And in its most basic form, the hero's journey is three parts. There's the departure, where the hero receives some call to action and leaves behind his hometown and what he knows. There's the initiation. While the hero is on the journey, he encounters obstacles and he meets new people and he undergoes things that try him and test him. And then finally, there's the return, where the hero comes back around full circle to find that something has changed. Maybe it's himself, maybe it's his hometown, maybe it's the world. And I think that that's a great view of story. We use it today in the three-act structure, the setup, the conflict, and the conclusion. You see that in almost every film you watch and almost every book that you read. But I think that the essence of story is a little bit more simple than that. And so in order to kind of flesh out an idea of what the essence of story is, I looked at a company that does storytelling extremely well, the Pixar company. I'm sure we're familiar with most of their movies. And Pixar has constructed a list of 22 rules of storytelling. They say these are what people need to know if they're going to tell a good story. Tonight I want to share with you rule number 14 and rule number 22. <laughs> favorite. Rule number 14 asks the question, why must you tell this story? What is the belief burning within you that your story feeds off of? And rule number 22 asks, what is the essence of your story? Because if you know that, you can build out from there. I would like to say that the essence of story, and I'm borrowing a definition here from an author named Daniel Pink, but the essence of story is context enriched by emotion. It's this idea that you take a set of circumstances and a set of facts and you inject emotion and the product is a story. So now that we have a simple idea of what stories are, I'd like to take a look at the benefits of storytelling. And given our definition, I think that the number one benefit of story is the emotional impact you can have on your audience. The best way to take a look at the, the emotional impact that can come from a story is to compare it to something that we usually view as opposite or very different, logic. We often think of logic as facts, right? As truth, as concrete evidence. Stories we tend to think of as something a little bit different, maybe more artsy, um, maybe they don't even necessarily tell the truth all the time. And I think that that's a bad way, or I think that it's bad to polarize those two, because I think that there are things that story has, there are elements of story that facts can't cover, and ways that facts and logic are lacking. For instance, logic oversimplifies things. You can't use logic or facts to really explain or determine some more abstract concepts like beauty, or pain, or pleasure, or moral good or evil. With a story, on the other hand, you have the ability to take those facts and the knowledge and combine it, package it together with the emotional impact. You take your context and you enrich it with emotion. And then you can deliver that to your audience in a way that is tremendously impactful. So if we view story and emotion as going hand in hand, how does story relate, or what role does story play in industries that are typically facts-based? So 
tonight I'd like to look at healthcare and business. In healthcare, human beings traditionally have taken a facts-based approach. Doctors go to med school and they receive a tremendous amount of knowledge and information with the intent of being able to go into the world, listen to what the patients are telling them about their physical hurts or their ailments, and then diagnose and operate accordingly. Very much about the facts. However, there's a new kind of wave sweeping through healthcare, um, and it's referred to as narrative medicine. And this is the idea that, that doctors need to be trained in the storytelling art. They need to be able to understand what the patients are saying, because the patients are really just telling them a story of what hurts. So if the doctors can understand the story that's coming from the patients, and can get the emotion that's from that, then they'll be able to use the facts in a more successful and a, a more effective way. I think uh, the essence of narrative medicine is empathy. So if we look at business, storytelling is important to business in two different ways. I think the internal component of business and the external component. Looking at the external, story is all about how you market something. If you can market your ideas to people in the form of a story, your ideas, your products, your company, then you'll be meeting them where they're at because human beings naturally store memories as stories. So if you can take the facts about your product and you can combine it with the emotional impact that your product can have and deliver that to your audience, they'll be receiving that in a way that their brain is naturally programmed to remember it. If we look at the internal component of business, then we need to take a look at how human beings learn. People learn from stories. There's a reason why business is taught to students primarily through case studies. They take the facts and a circumstance surrounding a company. They tell the story, or the, the principal, or the principal is then taught to the students in the form of that. And then the students are told to go out and to apply that to the world that they interact with. A case study is really just a story. And that's the reason why some of the top executives and companies around the world, big companies like Xerox, like Apple, NASA, are being trained in storytelling. Because people realize that if the executives know how to tell the stories to their employees, the employees will be more effective and will appreciate working for the company more. So I would like to share a short, sort of case study of my own with you. Like Dr. Chapman mentioned, Last semester, I had the opportunity to work for the Walt Disney Company. I was working in Orlando, Florida at the Magic Kingdom. Now, the essence of the Walt Disney Company is story. And the essence of the Magic Kingdom is fantasy. Walt Disney wanted story to be the heart of his company. He wanted everything the company did to tell a story. And we can see that in, uh, in the map of the Magic Kingdom. And so this is a map that was drafted back in 1971, right before the Magic Kingdom opened. And you can see from looking at this, the story that Walt wanted to tell. Let me show you. Down here at the bottom is where you enter. These are the main gates. You walk up Main Street, USA, and you come to the circular area called the hub. Up until you get to the hub, you're going through the introduction of the story. You're seeing characters and seeing posters of attractions that you're going to be experiencing throughout the day. Walt is inviting you into this world of story. When you get to the hub, you can see the entrances to each of the different lands. There's Adventureland, Frontierland, Liberty Square, Fantasyland, and Tomorrowland. Each of these lands represents a chapter in the story of your day in the Magic Kingdom. Each of these lands has their own unique story. In fact, each attraction, each shop, and each restaurant in the lands has their own story. The story is preserved down to the very basic details of working at Disney. This is my name tag from when I worked at the company. And for those of you that can't see in the back, it's got my name on it, obviously, but it also has my location. This is my hometown where I'm from. In my case, it says California State University, Fresno. And by putting the location in the hometown of the cast members onto their name tag, each guest that interacts with a cast member understands that they have a backstory, that they came from somewhere, and that they've gone through a journey to get to where they are now. Storytelling is everything to the Disney company. So if we 
know the essence of story, that's really important. And we know the benefits of story, which is also vitally important. But I'd like to make this presentation a little more personal by introducing the stories around you. You see, stories are everywhere. We see stories when we ask someone how their day went. They respond with a story. When we see any advertisements, we're witnessing stories. In fact, I would argue that for you science majors out there, when you write a lab report in your procedure section, you're really just telling the story of your experiment. Because stories are everywhere, although I know it's not typically applied this way, the law of supply and demand says that if stories are everywhere, then they're devalued. I think that we don't value stories nearly enough. And this model doesn't really work, because I'm not saying that we need fewer stories in order to value them. I'm saying we need to value the stories that we witness. Understand that the person sitting next to you in class has a story. Understand that your professor has a story. Fresno State has a story. Even the people you interact with, the cashiers at Target, have stories. I think it's important for you to know these stories and know that there is a journey that that person is undergoing. And it's important to watch and see how that impacts your life. Now, that brings me to the climax of my talk, your story. You see, each one of you has thoughts, experiences, and emotions that are uniquely yours. You have a place in this grand story called life, and you have your own story. Determine what the heart of your story is. What is your essence? Why do you do the things that you do? What drives you? I think if you know that, and if you're capable of taking the circumstances of your life, taking wherever you are, and enriching it with passion, with emotions, I think that it's going to make for A, a much more successful life, but B, a much more enjoyable life. How many of you think this is a lecture? It's supposed to be, right? <laughs> well, what I want you to realize now is that this lecture is just a story. In fact, this lecture is my story. This is the story of how I've learned the importance of storytelling and how I'm applying what I've learned to my life. See, I started at Fresno State with little knowledge of story, probably not unlike many of you. I knew that I appreciated good books, I knew that I appreciated films, but I viewed story as entertainment and not much more. Then I read A Whole New Mind by Daniel King, and that sparked in my head the same questions that I'm posing to you. What makes a story good? What are the benefits of storytelling? From there, I changed my major. I spent more time with people, and I started learning the stories that were around me. I even went to the Disney company for a semester, all for the purpose of learning what I'm telling you now. There will be people, issues, and events in your life that you will encounter. They will impact you. You will find yourself drawn to them. Some of them will change your heart, and some of them will impact your mind. Help write those stories. Know that you are the hero of your life, so make your story 